they can hear me. N yeah, let's start over, dude. Let's start over. There we go. Can you say something? Hello. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Now everything's working. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you um, update software and don't stream for like eight months and then like You're restart right. five minutes before. <laughs> we're we're a bit rusty, guys. Yeah. Give us give us a break. Give we're a little break. rusty. Uh, still still missing some of that, you know, like still far away from that JRE. You know what I mean? You're not there yet. No, no, <laughs> not there yet. Maybe one day. One day, one day. Man. <laughs> we'll figure it out, dude. How have you been? I, if I'll start with uh, happy birthday. I'll start, oh, thanks, I'll, man. I'll start with that. It's still your birthday, so. It's yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like my birthday because it's Monday and uh -huh. we celebrate it like on the weekend. So this is like bonus. Oh, it's not really my birthday, okay. you know? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So like you celebrated uh, it already and it feels like it's already done. Yeah, like I'm tired of it. Yet... Like let's let's just go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's too much birthday. <laughs> I get it, I get it. I get I'm over it. it, man. Dude. How have you been, man? Like, I, I mean, we've met mo most recently, uh, you know, we're hanging out, so obviously, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it's been a while, though. It's been a while. Dude, what was the last time you were on the stream? I cannot remember. For uh, I, I think for I was one of your did. earlier, one of your earlier guests. And I mean, we went on your Learn Square podcast uh, two or three times, but Art Cafe right. was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. It might have been freaking 20 freaking years ago or something. Yeah, it was probably 20 years ago. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. I mean, I yes, actually, man. I'm, I, actually, I, I'm actually curious, man. I'm actually curious. When was it? Are you it? looking at it right now? Yeah. <laughs> dude, it was... Holy crap. Oh, yeah, dude, episode 22. Holy Whoa. shit. That's Whoa. Like, that's like, like 60 episodes ago. Dude, I'm glad to be back, man. I lo I love your podcast. I listen to it all the time. Dude, I've got so many messages. I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll, you know, what? I will brag. I got so many messages. Like, oh, is Art Cafe over? You know, it's like, no, it isn't. And uh, I try to reply to most of them, but um, no, it it wasn't over. I was taking a break because um, I just had too much going on in my life, and I figured, you know what, like, I just need like a legit break from everything. Just to kind of relax, you know, take it easy. Don't have any like extra curricular stuff going on. I just like literally needed a period of time where I can just work, normal yeah. work, spend some, you know, get some family time, and then uh, chill, you know, and do actually human stuff. <laughs> for right, <once. laughs> but I think I think that's that's one of the things about you is that you're very curious about pushing the envelope and it doesn't really matter, you know, if it's art or not, but you enjoy like doing a new thing, you know, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I'm, I want to do like, you know, learn squared. And now I want to do a podcast. And now I want to make an anime shader. Like you're just very kind of curious and there is no point for you where you're like, oh, now I've accomplished something. Like now is the time that I've arrived. It doesn't exist at your level. I don't yeah. think. I think so. You, I, you I, just you're gonna keep doing stuff because that's your personality. You get obsessed about stuff and you enjoy it. And you and you suck it up and then you move on to the next thing. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. It's a it's actually a great quality. Like you you were obsessed with photography. I remember. Yeah. For a long time, and you I think you learned so much about cinematography and color grading and exposure and stuff like that. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, you know, like when you pick up those, I, I think the, the best example of like picking something up and then like running with it and becoming like super good at it to a point where it's like, holy shit, like, holy crap is Ash Torp, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. You've seen Ash you've, is inspiring, man. You've seen his photography, yeah? Uh, yeah, of You course. know, the moment he started posting, it's like when he actually started doing it for reals. I remember the time when... Uh, like we would have those phone calls, like because I I talk with Ash like every day. We we just send to each other like so much shit that would just get us get us in trouble for sure. But, um, just you know, just fun stuff. Um, but you know, I remember I remember when I was into photography and I was like really obsessed about it. 
uh he would just give me a ton of shit for like dude you're you're buying all this equipment <laughs> obviously just like right. you know being playful with it. it's not like giving me real shit but just like you know poking fun and then like literally you know a couple of years uh, later he's doing the same thing and i'm kind of, of returning course. the favor <laughs> well i think i think both of you you enjoy like climbing ladders like that's kind of the way i put it like you enjoy like starting at level one and then working up like you did like jujitsu and stuff like you still do that right no i haven't been doing jujitsu for a okay long but, but for a while you you were super into jujitsu i remember but you like enjoy being like oh i suck at this thing but i'm gonna like level up until i get to a certain point and i think that's right that it, it's an awesome quality as an artist to have i think to to be okay accepting that and be like oh level one is awesome i like being at level one yeah you know i remember um it's kind of weird that it, this is this is about me <laughs> whereas oh yeah i forgot <laughs> <laughs> i'm interviewing you sorry uh yeah we can switch roles that's fine <laughs> um anyway I, I you know i'll i'll, I'll mention this because sometimes i get those mean comments uh very rarely but sometimes like oh like let the guests talk it's like uh like most of the guests i have and i actually learned learned from the comments as well like people would say like you're interrupting your guests and like you're not like not letting them talk enough you know and I've noticed in some episodes I did that, so I'm trying to improve. But when I'm with friends, like Aton is a good friend of mine. We've we've known each other for like ten years, almost almost ten years, ten years yeah. now, yeah. Um, so it's just like you know, it, it, what we were doing here is almost like meeting for a coffee, you know, and just chatting. But but it's more like uh, it's it's like w w I meet you at uh, Starbucks and someone's someone's actually recording, you know. <laughs> right, like I kind of forgot for a second we're doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um yeah so it's kind of funny like it's about me but no you're right you're absolutely correct and you know i i think um yes fuck this is this is such a big topic to to discuss you know like we could go dive deep into like different levels of it like what makes people like what makes uh me to do it because like i've mentioned on on numerous occasions that you know one thing i'm kind of jealous about yourself specifically is that you and, and don't take it in the wrong way. It's actually a compliment. You're like a very much like a flat line in terms of like <laughs> progression. Like you, oh. you, <laughs> what? <laughs> you, you never have like low lows and like like extreme highs. It's always like consistent lineup. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, because flat line means you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a wrong reference but i just like because like you're always you're always very mellow like you're always like i've never seen you being like super upset or like overjoyous you know what i mean oh yes yes there's like certain character of people that like they'll just go extremes in in, in both directions right uh yeah i i told shaddy i was like most of my opinions, my feelings, I live life on medium. Like I don't care <laughs> about a, like I'm just chill with whatever. But there's a few things, very you know, handful of things where I'm a ten on it. Right. But yeah, everything of else, everything else, I'm like, I and I do this on purpose because I really you know I struggled a lot with like stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through high school and college and stuff like that, and it was for me a conscious decision to 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 deal with that and it's not like i'm bottling it up or anything but i relax and i don't let stress and anxiety get to me the way that they did uh because it just i was a wreck like i couldn't get anything done and mm. it, worrying about the problem made it so much worse than just chilling out take a breath you'll figure it out you know what i mean so right so what I made think, you so what made you uh like change your change your mindset obviously because obviously you sound you what you say about your past is exactly you know what, what i feel most of the time like i have those moments where i'm like pushing real hard um but then i will have will have like uh stretches of time where i'm like fuck like nothing's working i'm doubting myself on every you know every corner you know hey, worrying you know, about shit Obviously, like I'm a human and of course I doubt myself and I stress about things. So, you know, I'm not like a robot about this stuff. It's just for me, I I take as many steps as I can to remove, you know, any points of stress from my life or stressful people, because I think when you're around stressful people or negative people, 
it, it will eventually bring you down too, even if it's not your stuff, you know? Yeah. If, you, if you're around people that are constantly like pulling their hair out and stuff like that. And so I think for me, it was just getting away from situations like that or people like that. Mm-hmm. And when it came to work, when I started out, um, some, some of my teachers would say like, take, say yes to every job, like just get as much as you can. And I was like a wreck. I was doing like four jobs freelance on top of naughty dog stuff. And I was like losing my mind Mm -hmm. because I, I thought I had to do it. And then I just realized like, what if you just said no? Like what, what, what's going to happen? Like you can just say, sorry, I'm busy. And to me, that was the biggest amount of stress was like, I'd be at work worrying. I'm getting feedback from somebody that wants it now, but I'm at work and I can't do it. And that's like, it's the worst feeling in the world to feel helpless like that. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I say no to most, most of the freelance jobs now. And I know I'm, I'm making less, but I'm okay with it because I'm not, I'm not stressing. So it's okay. And to me, it's a good trade off like that. But maybe some people don't feel that way. But for me, it, it had to be, I had to make that decision to take much chiller, like just do magic cards every once in a while. And that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. all or do a tutorial here and there. But the stressful, you know, like we need it now. We need like, you know, sketches yeah. every day, stuff like that. I can't do that and work a full time job. Like it's yeah. it's not possible. Yeah, it can be very difficult. And uh, the biggest the biggest issue with that is uh, unless you, you feel like really engaged and powerful and, you know, you can maintain that quality of yourself for like prolonged period of time like taking extra jobs and then getting burned out is is probably the worst thing you can do and i i think i think i personally made those mistakes where i took too much work and then it suffered the quality of like overall quality of all the projects i was i was on right right and then you feel like shit because you're turning in you're an artist you're super judgmental about art and you're like this sucks and i'm turning it in like you feel terrible yeah like i didn't do i your job as a concept artist is to make the most awesome thing with what they ask every time. So when you're turning in stuff that is not cool to you, you're like, what am I doing? This so phony. It's not right. Mm. And, and for me, it's like art is supposed to be fun, right? It's supposed to be a fun expression of stuff that you like, you enjoy doing, you're showing a creative spin based on what, what you like in life. And you're, you're just phoning it in for people because you said you, you know, you took on too many jobs. Like for me, it's not right. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, had, I had to make a decision. But I was in the same boat, man. Yeah. It's yeah. So what, like, was, what was your, I have two questions here. Like first one and you know, like some of the, some of this we already discussed, but yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, one of the points was, you know, you used to stress out about like a lot and, you know, even prior, I guess prior to, joining naughty dog you know i guess that comes with like the anxiety of like not feeling good about yourself like oh if, if i'm good enough to work in a studio all that stuff i get that but but were there any moments where um like that was it was it like something you realized over time let's put it this way or were there like specific moments in your life where something happened that was like a turning point you know that made you made you you know, perceive life the way you're perceiving it right now? I, I'm not sure if I can point to a specific memory, but it, it was just a general feeling of like kind of early days at Naughty Dog and, excuse me, <clears throat> working with, you know, you guys were my heroes and I'm like getting to join you and I'm so worried that I'm not good enough. And like every assignment, I'm like freaking out. <laughs> and then on top of that, I'm like, oh, I need to take freelance because that's what you do. So then that on top of it, I'm like not sleeping. Then I come to work and I'm like, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. This sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it it was just a slow realization. Like I did it for years. And at, at a certain point, like I managed it better and I would take on like, just a few less jobs, but it, it just kept not going away that feeling of stress. And I was like, why, why Mm. am I doing this when I could probably just say no. And you know what, maybe they'll hit me up later. Maybe they won't, whatever, like something else might come along and, 
for me, it's much more enjoyable to go home and like experiment and work on personal paintings. And, and like, that's where I found my fulfillment, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. You know, like I, I did not have that problem. Uh, at least when I like being in, like putting myself in your situation, like when I joined Nighty Dog, I was so fucking stressed out. Um, because uh, for those who don't know, like when you join Naughty Dog, you start working there. I mean, I, I don't know how it is now. I haven't been working at Naughty Dog for like for years. Um, but I remember, you know, when I joined and it, during the time I was there and even, you know, sometime after, uh, like the general way of, of the, the, the general way in use in, in which studio is, is or was running was that, you know, like if you wanted to get a feedback, you actually had to ask for it. Uh, if you wanted to get a meeting, you you had to go and make the meeting happen, and so so, you know, Naughty Dog is very famous for having like super selective process of who they are admitting to to be you know, in the staff basically, right? So yeah, they are really it's selective. Pretty... Yeah. So and the selectiveness of that matters for them because their structure, the way that they operate, is that they try to make sure that the people that are hired uh, are responsible enough to actually t- take take matters into their into their hands and not always ask questions like what to do what to do what to do um you know not be like a burden on someone else's time let's put it this way right so even if someone has a title that like a lead artist or you know art director or whatever um that does not mean that you can just wait for them to bring you work you know like you have to like constantly engage in the pr- in the in the creative process all the time. And I remember when I joined, I, I, you, you told me about this experience. Uh, you had the sa- exactly same experience as well, where you know you, you would start work and like for two weeks no one's talking to you. It's like what the fuck's going yeah. on? <laughs> and, and so, from my perspective, this is the first studio job I've ever had. So I just thought, is this what you do? You just kind of chill out and it's it's like is it really this easy you just kind of you do it and then nobody talks to you (laughs) and then maybe maybe if they have an idea they come over that's it like i didn't really understand what the hell was going on but it really is like you said like there's not really a producer going to check on everyone and it is it's a lot better now than i think when you were there there's a lot more people that are taking charge Mm -hmm. so but there's still that element of if you have a problem, you have a question, just get up and go, go talk to someone. The meeting is just at someone's desk. It's, there's not really like, let's all assemble. I'm sending you an email notification. You just go to someone's desk and then you call whoever you need and you're like, come over here. Let's look at this. Yeah. I like, I like that about Naughty Dog. I really like that. I, you know, I had a complete opposite experience when I was at, uh, you know, Crytek for instance, Crytek, it was very, um, corporate let's put it this way so like anytime you wanted to have a meeting uh like a formal meeting like just get a couple people together like you couldn't just go to their desk and say let's have a meeting like no no we have to go through email like producer like oh fuck dude and it would take forever forever. to set up anything you know the uh the other studio i was just talking to you about uh when i i went in for something it was like the producer of the producer would arrange a pass for me to get into the building. <laughs> then there's a secretary to sign you in. Then a second producer comes with you to set up the room before the real people come into the meeting to see you. So it's like 15 minutes of like gatekeepers to get, you could just like walk in and like have a meeting. No, like there's like three people in the way that don't mm-hmm. have anything to say except for like, oh, wait for me, like go sign this, do that. It, it's kind of crazy how like the big companies can be inefficient like that. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get the structure like that and, and like more, um, like if you're a programmer or something, you know, like, I, I don't know enough about it, but I guess like when you're, when you have like a tech company or something, like it's probably better to set up things that way. Or if, if, you know, let's say if you're a manager or CEO, like, like a, like a head person and you're supposed to talk with like hundreds of people, then you have to have some kind of structure. Oh yeah, so you don't I mean, get crazy, you know. I'm, I'm definitely not saying like producers 
can't it like there's no reason for them i'm not saying that there's yeah. definitely for specific needs you need a producer it's just not going to work without somebody running it but it is it just more as a funny observation with giant companies how many there's so many people in the way yeah you know it could just be like one producer the whole time no they have three <laughs> it's like <laughs> it seems a little bit unnecessary when I'm coming at it from the perspective of Naughty Dog, where it's like, what's the producer? We haven't, we don't have those. Yeah. Just, just go, just go do the thing you want to do. Yeah. Once you work at Naughty Dog and then you try something else or, you know, have an experience with other companies, it's, uh, or even prior to that, like it, it opens your, it opens your, your eyes like, oh, oh, okay. Like if you have. If you have a team of people that are smart enough to, you know, take matters in their hands, like you, you actually can eliminate a lot of like unnecessary, like it's cutting, cutting a fat, you know, like trimming the fat yeah. basically. And, and I think our department is very different too. Like I think, um, the animation and story people, they do have producers at Naughty Dog because there's, there's a list of shots that need to get done and mo capped and all the actors. So there, there is a lot of organizing that it for sure needs to happen. So yeah. we do have, you know, like I think two producers, but it's just for, it's not anyone that I would talk to in my field of work really. Yeah. I mean, every, like every now and then, I guess, but, but not like on the daily basis, you know? Yeah. You don't yeah. have like a production, production assets managers or, you know, like, you know, assistants of producer or something that rally you like, Oh, send this with the template and do that with yeah. the fucking, proper structure here and there is like no like we don't do that sure yeah that um, makes sense let's talk about something interesting <laughs> yeah that's kind of boring i you know it's a good insight a lot of people might not know like um you know how how those things work so it's it's always it's always good to have that insight you know yeah that's true um, that's true I think we were discussing like right before the stream because like i never prepared to those you're like i don't know we'll just wing it every time <laughs> we'll i ask just you wing it. exactly <laughs> um so we're kind of winging it but you've mentioned you know it was it was an interesting topic to talk about and obviously we're gonna do like a qa towards the end um but like there was this topic about like character traits or uh overall traits uh, of an artist you know like what makes like what kind of uh character traits is good to have or stuff like that you know i think that could yeah. be could be interesting topic because i'll i'll tell you honestly i've you know past couple of months or well, not a couple of months it's been like almost two years now i've been talking about it but i got really really like dove into you know sort of understanding how human brain works you know how we oh, really? think yeah like how we think how we react you know like what are the char character traits we have like how they, um, how they basically like, depending on what kind of trait you have, like what the outcome is going to be, you know, uh, that kind of opened my, my, my eyes into the perspective of, you know, like remember that a couple of years ago that the book came out 10,000 hours, I can't remember. Right. Um, and honestly, like the more, the more I think about the research that I'm reading about and different opinions of, of different people that are like way, way smarter than me. Um, mm -hmm. The more I believe that that book, it's kind of bullshit, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of bullshit. I think, I, I don't think it has 10, some truths, but it's, it's, I think yeah, it's, it's like 10,000 hours for art is your decent, but it's not master level. I think it's like 100,000 hours probably, right? Hmm. Hundred thousand hours, of, it's a hundred years. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at math. <laughs> no, I think uh, ten thousand hours was like if you. Would Isn't work, that four years? Four yeah, years? if you would work like eight hours a day, that would be like four years. So yeah, like I don't know, like forty years. You think you need forty years to become? Okay, maybe not forty years. <laughs> maybe maybe you need way less. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I'm not. I just do colors. I don't do numbers. I just do colors, dude. Dude, uh, I, I've asked you this before, but like, what made you do art? Because I think that's important to the to the to the question, like the of the characteristics, you know. 
Oh, I think, yeah, I think that's like a good thing because I think rather than a number of hours, what I've noticed in, you know, the people I would consider masters of art field and not just concept art, but master painters everywhere have, um, they think that small things are worth more, meaning they think the details and getting obsessed over tiny things are so much more interesting to them. So like the way like Rua Lee, he's a plein air painter and he's just, he's fucking obsessed with the way that water hits rocks on the beach. That's mm -hmm. his thing, right? And like, you know, Jesse Powell, another plein air painter, he's like obsessed with capturing the exact right lighting and color of like Big Sur. That's his whole thing. And I think it's so cool because I, I think everyone, like you are super obsessed with details and you're super focused in on like, I love like your Showtime stuff. It's just all the things you're super interested in, right? But mm -hmm. I think most people, they wouldn't, you know, jump to that stuff and, and be noticing that, but that's that's kind of why we do art. You're like showing right. people that what you think is cool is cool. You're just showing them a painting of a thing you already thought is cool, but they just didn't notice it, right? Right. Like, like I think giant rock temples are fucking awesome, but maybe the general public doesn't agree with that. So I make a painting and I'm like, see, they are awesome. <laughs> that I guess that's like how I think about art. It's you, you're kind of showing people like your obsession in the form of a painting. So they see the world the way that you see it. Mm. Cause normally people don't think about visuals, right? Yeah. Not non artists. I mean, the normies, <laughs> the normies, <laughs> uh... but you know what I mean? They're not like, they don't see, the way that the sun illuminates a cloud when it covers it. But you you look at that and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, everyone's like, what's this guy doing? Like, why? <laughs> why is he drooling? Why does he have a nosebleed? Like the time we went for that coffee and it was like a sunset and it was like hitting the buildings of the, the, the office buildings. And it was like uh, the clouds were like those little puffy, like their diarrhea scatter, but like looked awesome. It had like yeah. two layers. And we were like, I mean, I, fucking... I wouldn't call it diarrhea, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was me, you, John, I think John and Aaron and, and maybe someone else. I, uh, uh, maybe Nick. I can't remember if Nick was already working with, uh, with us or not. But we were, yeah. wa we were walking from, you know, from Naughty Dog to Starbucks and we're just like drooling over it. And yeah, like we're random, freaking out. And random persons yeah. like those guys are fucking high, dude. Yeah, they're like they're so stoned. Oh my god! But we're sitting there like making caveman noises. And we're like, oh, 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 yeah. And it was just like, that's what I mean. I, I, I really think that's like what good artists do is they, they, they notice those things and they think they're more important than most people. But, but like most people are just walking; they don't fucking care, right? Yeah. But don't you think that that's just uh, like the amount of obsession you have uh, on the subject matter in general? Like, you know, um, there is a there's a whole palette of, you know, artists out there. Right. There, there are the ones that they find it enjoyable. It's a hobby and they just do it, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. And then there is like the Vitalis and the Ash Torps of this world, you know, or, you know, surgeons or whatever, you know name name your best artist or your favorite artist right and you can you can range the amount of obsession that they have towards the craft from like you know one to a hundred you know and then the in intensity in which they are you know doing that so like how much of that intensity persists uh, throughout time you know some artists uh gonna go 110 like go absolutely be above and beyond but only in the shirt bursts and then like go chill for a year or two you know sure uh, yeah but I, I think like like in Vitaly's case like he's never not gonna be obsessed with mechs and hard surface right like if he sees if he goes to an airplane museum or a car museum he's gonna get so fucking fired up yeah over the tech thing about it you know what i mean like that's his thing yeah he's so he's a hundred percent in that forever like he's locked he can't change because he's not deciding 
oh, I like mechs, so I'm going to do that. He's, his fucking heart told him when he was a little kid, probably, mechs are the coolest thing ever. Everything else is secondary. Or maybe he's just building a freaking Skynet, dude. Oh, yeah, that's true. Probably that. Maybe that. The reason I'm but asking, I... though, it's, you know, you know, about the mastery. It's like we just, like when we met the other day, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, this film that came out last year and got a got an oscar the documentary uh free solo right yeah about, yeah. about alex uh, honnold and i remember watching it I, i'm curious what are your, what was your experience about this because i remember watching it and i knew like to to be a climber on that level like you have to be like really prepared and i knew this because like I am an artist and I know how much time I'm putting into the craft, right? Or a second example, like when you watch uh, those this Netflix uh, show, uh, uh, fucking the F1 one. What was the name of it? Gosh, I forgot. The F1 Which show? One? The Formula One? Oh, I think it's just called Formula One, right? Or Inside like race, Formula One? Race to, to Survive or something. I can't yeah. remember. Um, and then you see like the amount of like intricate details that go into the craft and it's it the the things that on a surface level they look either insane or or easy they require so much preparation right like when you watch uh free solo and you realize oh this dude like it wasn't he was just like crazy motherfucker that has no fear and he decided to climb the el capitan no it, he was a crazy motherfucker that has no fear right but I he prepared for years on end being obsessed about it you know i think he's the outlier though like he's like the one of the whole industry to that level right like it's not just like the general population of rock yeah, of climbers course. have his personality he's like an extreme fucking nutcase about <laughs> solo climbing right like that's, he's so intense true. about it that's true but i don't think that's like a healthy amount i think that was like maybe part of the documentary was that it's not super <laughs> it's not super great to do that but you see what i mean it's like on the surface level like for if you don't know anything about the craft like wow. you're very ignorant about it you know like when we're talking about us you know drooling about clouds and, and how the sun reacts to the building like how the shadows and the soft shadows blah, 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 all that stuff right that we're just obsessed about looking at and then the random person in the street is like what what are those guys doing like it makes no sense right yeah yeah so the the random guy on the street reacting to us doing that it's like i could i could imagine being in those shoes because when i watched free solo like before i watched it i was just like oh yeah he's kind of crazy you know um i know it takes a lot of preparation like if you want to be an artist it takes a lot of time blah 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 right but you don't you don't really understand how much work it takes to get to that no. level you know what i mean yeah so I, yeah but i don't I know guess, yeah we're too stupid I, I, for this <laughs> <laughs> uh no i think i think that is a good point i i do think that for i guess what i'm trying to say is like it's good to be excited and obsessed about things to you know like like if i didn't do art anymore i still would think that sunsets are pretty and the beaches but like it's part of like who mm -hmm. you are it's part of who we are as artists is that 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 is just so interesting to us visual design color anything like that right um I think that dude is is just on a whole nother mission. I think he's trying to like <laughs> trying to get as close as he can to death. There, there's something else going on there that's like this is not about the craft of climbing anymore for this guy. This is a, a weird psychotic thing I can't understand <laughs> really. But it's it's not like like there's no equivalent for concept art. There's nobody out there who's like I only paint in blood. Like that's my thing. Like there, there's no like crazy sacrifices we have to do it's just people are like oh i i work a lot or i don't work a lot that's kind right. of the range <laughs> i guess the consequence level of failure uh in our situation is pretty minimal yeah like we're not gonna Compared. get smushed we're not gonna see our friends die from doing it because they yeah. didn't prepare enough like it's we're it's a totally different <laughs> comparison but i think i i was listening I listen a lot to like comedy podcasts mm -hmm. and I think it's like really similar 
there's so many similarities to the way that uh, comedians prepare for their set. And I was just listening to Kevin Hart uh, on Joe Rogan. Yeah, that was a good one, man. Like, so yeah, anyone, really... anyone who missed it, go watch it after this. It was really First, like, watch inspiring. this, but then go watch it yeah. after this, you know? It's and it was super inspiring. It, it was so true what he was saying. Like, he keeps going to shows, smaller shows to practice, and then he goes to a big show. And if it doesn't yeah. get the right response, he doesn't get sad about it. He just goes back to work and he works on it. And he's like, it takes me, I'll take four or five hours of bullshit to get one hour that's funny. Yeah. And I think that's like so true, at least the way I work. I will do sketch after sketch and I'm like, it's not cool enough. Like do another one. And I might do like 20 and I'll post six that I thought were good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I actually do. And you know, uh, he mentioned that like a few times on the podcast. Oh, actually, you know, almost entirety of it was dedicated towards like how, like you could, like if, if there was a big takeaway from me, from this podcast, from, you know, listening to Kevin Hart on JRE, was that A, he's super, ins like he's such an inspire inspiring person. But B, there is so much humility in him, you know? Like yeah, he's I super, you know, super, like there's so much, the level of it is just like, oh, wow. Like he has absolutely no ego whatsoever. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, he was even saying like, what do I have to complain about? Like I got, I got a family or like my daughter said she's, you know, I'm her best friend. Like, you know, he's, he's super down to earth. He's just like a normal guy. And he's like, I can't let, I can't let, you know, all this shit get to me. I'm just going to go back to work, like take yeah. a break, go back to work. And like, you know, I just, en he enjoys, uh, like making people laugh. And I think it's very similar to art. Like we enjoy when people enjoy the art or they get inspired by something we made. It's, it's fucking cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I, to me, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's like you work on it and it's not good enough. And especially when you start comedy, you like go out and you suck for like five years. And I think that's so similar to art. You're going to suck true. forever. And then something's going to click and you're going to start networking. You're going to meet people that inspire you and push you in different directions. And it, it's sort of this, this really small community. Like there's not that many comedians. There's not that many concept artists. It's like pretty tight knit, you know? Yeah. I mean, there is uh, a lot, but not on the high level, you know? Not like the the ones the average person knows. I don't think a ton of comedians out there, but all the famous people seem to know each other, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for so sure. I, I think for concept artists, it's like when you go to a workshop or something, you're like, oh, I, I know of you, like kind of familiar with mm -hmm. people. Maybe we don't know everybody, but it's like you, you recognize the name and the art from people. And I think... It's just super cool that it, it's it's kind of like a tight knit community like that. Yeah, that's true. Like I I would lose my mind if it was like thousand people to remember. Like over twenty, it's already too much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, Joe mentioned this on many 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 podcasts. Uh, I I've, I pretty much listened to almost every single one he posts. Wow, not really? all not all of them are are that great, but um, most of them are pretty cool. And like he he says it all the time. You know, Joe does like joe is like super successful he has he has more money than he can spend it was kind of funny because he because he because he mentioned he's getting tesla and he actually got a tesla right, right. and then yeah and then brian callen asked him like how much he paid for it and he was like i don't remember <laughs> 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 must be nice man <laughs> must you know be I mean? nice he has so much money he doesn't have to do anything you know uh and yeah. yet you know there's there's this obsession about work an obsession about craft of, of comedy and you know he will go to comedy store and they, how much they can pay him for for a set like a few hundred bucks that's like penny like he's, this, just, he's doing it for fun man he yeah, loves it almost like for him it's almost like doing it for free at this point but for him it's like making again like making those failures like trying to fuck up as much as he can doing those smaller shows test new bits all that stuff right and then and then do a special i think he he, he was talking about like the, the best way of you know of doing the doing it these days is like you do like you write you write all fucking time 
how much it's like us sketching and, and practicing art all the time right it's the same it's yeah. exactly the same principle and then and testing the waters testing the for waters sure. all the time for sure and i think the the thing that you know i'm not like a mma fan so i don't know him from that but i listened to his podcast once and it was an egyptologist and i just thought like Joe as a host was so good because he's so genuinely like curious about stuff. And yeah. I think it, it just to kind of like bring it back to what we were talking about. He gets like so excited about all these different things mm -hmm. because he's just a very like curious person and he likes to be informed and knowledgeable about stuff. And like most of his guests are like really cool scientists that you probably haven't heard of or like a doctor that yeah. the anti-aging doctor that was like super fascinating that to was me. so crazy that guy was like right what 60 <laughs> you like he yeah younger he looks than like he's 30 <laughs> yeah and, but it it just to me i was like this is this is what he's a master of i think is like letting the interviewer do the talking and he's just he's genuinely he's so curious about it they don't have anything scripted just like for three hours, he just wants to ask questions because he's Should watch some delighted. of the early ones, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, watch, they're probably not that good. Dude, but... watch like anything from like six years ago. It's like, oh my god, Joe, shut the fuck up. <laughs> let the <laughs> let the person talk. Don't scream at him because he has oh, different opinion. <laughs> it's like I and I'm sure it's the same, you know, with your podcast. Anything take work, you know, you gotta yeah. test the waters a little bit and like make make it more refined as you go along, but I think it's just I'm drawn to people that are curious and excited. And I think as a quality, everyone that I know that I would consider successful is fucking excited about art and they have ideas and they're brainstorming yeah. and they, they get really fucking amped up about things, about learning new things. They're curious. They're experimenting all the time. It's not just like, oh, I do the same thing I did. 20 fucking years ago and i'm still i'm just gonna keep posting that you know that old ass fucking piece from some movie 10 years ago that nobody cares about you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean like it's like you I, always I, explore yeah it's just like i i'm drawn to those people that are experimenting exploring pushing new boundaries and like trying to climb the ladder trying to climb the mountain whatever metaphor you want to use but mm -hmm. i i just love those kinds of artists that are just blowing my mind on that front yeah i would say the same i i you know i've 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 noticed this thing where and I, it's a saying right like the you're the average of the the five people you're hanging out with right um, oh yeah for sure and obviously there are people you cannot like you, you can make a choice who's going to be your friend like with family it's, yeah. it's your family right <laughs> like, there's no choice there it's you're yeah. kind of stuck but um but yeah like if you could choose five friends like what what would those be um and yeah dude it makes so much sense and you know it's kind of it's it's kind of funny because like uh we all have like different addictions like in a way right uh if like a lot of us are addicted to social media I'm, I, I basically my approach to social media was like a journey for like i've been talking about it for almost two years now and now if i open facebook it's empty wall i i i literally unfollowed everyone the only thing i follow is like collective podcast from ash ash vitali wow. And fucking, <laughs> and fucking and my own podcast, dude. <laughs> that's that's <it>. great. <laughs> Same with so you're me. seeing your own. You're seeing your own posts. So yeah, you're like, that's, oh, that's I'm gonna like that exactly. one. And you know, I was like, oh, nothing's happening in the world. I can get back to work. <laughs> well, yeah, I think to to go back to what I was saying, like about you know dealing with with stress and anxiety. I think it's that same thing. Like I choose, you know, to hang out with people that are more optimistic and positive mm -hmm. and and excited about stuff and for social media too like uh it's not that i don't think people should complain about stuff because obviously they are you know they're going through some shit and they want to vent and stuff but if i follow someone that does that a lot me personally i'm like i don't want to wake up and the first thing i see is someone like doing an aggressive rant even if i fucking agree with them yeah i'm just like for me i'm like it's i'm so sensitive to that stuff that i wake up kind of in a bad mood if i see that so i just started unfollowing people and i'm like i you know what you're so right you should fucking argue you should do whatever you want to do 
I just would like to look at social media for the art aspect. So mm. I just like, as for my own self, need to cut out the sources of anxiety. So I just minimize, you know, a lot of social media stuff too, because I think it, it's good, at it, but it's also, it brings some bad stuff too for me. Yeah, I was listening. I can't remember where I found this. Like, I just I just look at so many random shit that I, you know, I tend to forget the, the sources of it. I should probably take notes if I find something like really good. That would be probably ideal. But there was this um, topic of, you know, I, I think I was looking at, you know, like morning routines of, of like really successful people or, you know, what, what are the traits of like, what are the personality traits that are common between like really obsessed, like successful people, whether they're like athletes, businessmen, you know, actors, w you name it, right? And, and I think I stumbled upon like there was this uh, sort of like a list. Um, I don't remember if it was a list or like a couple of things. No, it was like one thing that like really, really successful people do. And uh, that's something I want to sort of like do research about, like find an actual like scientific papers that kind of like support the claim of a person that was saying that because there's like a lot of scientific words. And, you know, with those uh, um, those videos that are like super motivational, like you watch them sometimes, you're like, how much yeah. of that is really, really the true, right? But there, sure. a few, few things that that person was saying were obviously true because like we do fall into like the ne negative feedback feedback loop and it's kind of funny like when you when you when you're on a youtube for instance right and you watch a video and you refresh all of a sudden like a whole whole page is like filled with the same shit right it's yeah like feeding, exactly it's like feeding you with the shit that algorithm things that you're gonna like and you know with the social media specifically because you can craft exactly what you can see you can like very easily go into that echo chamber of you know, either either a positivity where like like yourself and myself uh, as well, where you just like I like when I open social media, there's only two reasons I'm doing that. A, I want to look at cool shit, cool, inspiring shit to get me real pumped. Right. Or talk with friends that I haven't talked with for a while. And I yeah. know like that's the easier, easiest place for me to reach them. Right. Yeah, because it's not it's not a good format for discourse anyway. It's not nobody's. I don't know. Nobody's like convincing people, strangers on Twitter by their argument, right? Like, yeah. So for me, I, I'm the same way. I want to look at some dope art. I want to find new artists. I want to comment and support them. I want to like be positive. So I need to be surrounded by positivity. So it's just like it had to go. If I see, if I see people too often getting into arguments and stuff like that, I'm just like, for me, I, I gotta, I gotta unfollow you, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the claim, you know, the claim that I was listening to, and I, I want to do research, but it, it, it kind of tackles some of the subjects that are really well known, like, you know, like the uh, the law, law of attraction. Right. Or, you know, like five of your friends, like you're the average of like the five of the people you hang out with. Right. But also, you know, there's a claim and I, I'm really curious about it because I know the sort like I know the truth part about this is like by repeating an activity that has similar result all the time you will get addicted to it right so like slot machines are a perfect example social media is kind of like that like you scroll like if you want to refresh it's it's like pulling us you know oh yeah a lever. it's so it's so <laughs> like it gives you the endorphin rush for sure like to to check a thing and see that somebody commented for your thing it's like once you get that you're chasing the dragon forever like you know you just want to keep scrolling refreshing more input as much as you can yeah exactly uh but yeah they're like yeah, they're really like... sort of like made to be for you to be addicted so 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 there is the truth that you can yeah. fall into the the feedback loop right of repeating same activity over and over again yeah. to the result of like being addicted to something or having a ne negative, uh, you know, connotation to your life, basically, right? But the claim was, imagine a situation where, like, you have two different people, right? So one person is, like, hanging out with wrong people all the time and thinking only negative thoughts and complaining about life, right? Yeah. And so the claim yeah. is, like, you're teaching your brain to think negatively about everything or about most of the things. And because your brain 
um, you know, starts to like, that becomes like a habit. Um, it's very, and, and you know, the, one of the, one of the traits that I has actually proven, and I, I don't have fucking link to it again. <laughs> I should fucking start sell, saving those. But the, the proven claim is that your brain, like if you're, if you're imagining something happening to you, uh, your brain cannot distinguish whether it's, it's happening for real or not. I mean, like the chemical reaction is the same if it was happening for you, oh. to you for real or not happening at all. Right. And you're just That's imagining. fascinating. So, you know, you're imagining things, but your brain, your brain releases exactly the same chemicals. Right. So your response, like your, your body response becomes the same, you know, like how many times and maybe you're not, but like how many times a lot of us get worried about stupid shit that didn't even happen. Oh, all the time. Right. All the fucking time. Yeah, or, it's like, or it'll, oh my God, it'll be like, happen? like, dude, it, it'll be like, remember that thing you said 10 years ago? <laughs> you fucking idiot. And I'm like, oh my God, why am I thinking of this? Like at the gym right now, what's going on? And so the claim is, the claim is this. So like, if, if, if you can train your brain to be negative like that, right. And then, so if you're, if you're worrying about, about something, or if you're stressed because you're like complaining and you're getting angry, basically, like your, your, your body will start to produce more cortisol. Like you're going to get more anxious. You know, there's, there's a, a lieu of chemical reactions that's going to happen. That will just make you feel like shit generally. Right. And so <clears throat> question would be like, that is obviously fogging your brain from like seeing opportunities that might be in front of you, but you're so occupied by just looking at being in that feedback loop that you're not seeing those opportunities. Right. So what if you change the equation where you, start thinking about life positively, right? And imagining positive things happening to you, right? Would that change like the overall outcome? Would that mean that you're actually gonna start to see opportunities that, you know- for, I think so. For like a, I, an average person, it's like, oh, that he got lucky, you know? Yeah, maybe. When, when you, I don't know if it's gonna like make it appear, but I think your outlook definitely can- Yeah you know, dictate if you're in a good mood, you're going to feel like maybe making art or trying some new thing. If you're sitting and stewing and worrying about stuff, kind of hard to stop, you know, that train and just focus on art for a second. If you're like bent out of shape over an argument or like, you know, something's going on outside of your control and it, I've been there. It's a terrible feeling to have and you, you can't, nothing will fix it. You're like, I'll play games. I'll do some art. Like I just, nothing is working for me yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on something <clears throat> that I can't for the life of me. I can't solve this problem, but I'm, you know, my brain is, uh, is my worst enemy sometimes. So it'll just be like, Oh, you want to get super fucking worried about this one thing? <laughs> so how do you deal with that? Like, is there any, any like remedy that you find works the best or you just sort of like power through that shit? I, I have not found that powering through helps with that stuff. I mm -hmm. think in, in extreme cases, or not even extreme cases, I think therapy is just awesome. So if yeah. if you are, are having feelings like that, just go see go see a professional because it's I don't remember who said this, but they're like, if you're if you are super out of shape, you go to the gym and you get a trainer. Yeah. So if you're always in your mind you're bent out of shape why wouldn't you get a professional to deal with that like to help you run your brain better right yeah to just talk, talk it out and you know in in cases you can get fucking medication because maybe there's some shit that's wrong that you can't just think about it and fix it like maybe there's something fucking wrong yeah you know and your your dopamine levels your serotonin is like super down and you need some fucking medication yeah uh, like but would <clears throat> would yeah, with like depression and and you know generally like feeling like feeling moody and uh, like if you feel moody for way too long, that's a depression. Like there's no question about it. Yeah, it's like you're you not just like help. having a bad. For for me, I think I'm very lucky. Like it didn't ever get to a point where I thought I needed to go to therapy, but I did. Uh, I did change a lot of things in my life that were just kind of bumming me out and. Mm -hmm. You know, I started waking up early and I started accomplishing things before work started because I realized like I'm in this loop of like, wake up. Oh, fuck. Time for work. <laughs> Go run, 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 get to work, 
fuck, fuck, fuck all day. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck. And then I'm, <laughs> no, you just you're like, oh, I can't fix this. I can't solve this. So oh, this sucks. Whatever you know. I'm I just, know what you mean. Uh, and like at the end of the day, you're trying to do like the stuff you wanted to do, and you're already yeah, tired, and it's just like exactly. way too so long. So then I I would come home, eat dinner, hang out with my girlfriend. Dude, hang I need out with to take cat. that lesson. I need to start waking up early. Yeah. It's so so I was like, what if you get up and you fucking make yourself a latte, <laughs> and you do whatever you want to do for like two hours before you get ready for work? Yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. That's fucking because we start at ten thirty. So I'm like, there's no reason. I need to fucking roll out of bed at like 10, 20. Because <laughs> for a while when I was bummed out, I did that. And I was like, you know what? This is not fucking helping. Like sitting in bed, checking Twitter for like an yeah. hour. Like just get up, go to bed earlier and wake up. And you have, it's like beautiful day. Play some games, do some art, make some breakfast. And then by the time I get to work, I'm like, I already did a bunch of stuff that I want to do. So even if the rest of my day is shitty, like I already accomplished what yeah. I did. And then another thing was like, I started taking um, CBD. Do you ever use that? Yeah, I started I started doing that like a month ago too. Yeah, it, it doesn't work for everybody. But I think for me, like whatever's going on, it's totally helped in like every way. Like I feel like negative thoughts do not enter my brain so quickly. And it's it's like... I can still think about stuff, but I don't feel it as strong. Like it doesn't hurt and freak me out. I can just think about it in a more intelligent way and look at it from a distance. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm so bad at remembering who said these things, but somebody said like anxiety is like the way you deal with it is it's like watching a bus come to the stop and you're just like, I'm not going to get on. I'm, I'm acknowledging that the bus is here and I'm going to look at it and it's going to continue. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to just pretend this bus isn't here, but I'm just going to wait and I'm just going to let it go. Right. And I'm yeah, just, but, but, but bus for a while workers. it was like, for, for, <laughs> for a while it was like, get on that fucking bus. And then you take over and you fucking punch the bus driver out. And now you drive and just, <laughs> it, and I would just get so involved into what I was worrying about but i think with with cbd and like you know changing my schedule and for a lot of for a lot of the a lot of it was just going uh on like fun trips on the weekend like making sure Mm -hmm. that i had uh like i scheduled a break for myself to be like oh go go drive up the pacific coast highway or like go to this cool new restaurant you know, like, go just do something where you're totally detached from everything. Breathe in fresh air. Like, realize, like, this is what life is for most people. They get to just go outside, enjoy things. Just get to like, be normal. <laughs> just go. Exactly. Like, just go fucking enjoy what life has to offer. Like, you don't have mm-hmm. to just sit and worry and start work and you're stressing out about shit. So it was that. And I think... Uh, going to the gym consistently also helped me deal with a lot of anxiety. Like you, it's some caveman shit, but you're just like lift heavy thing. No, it's put it down. It's proven. Yeah. It's just, by the time you finish, you're like, Oh, I'm not that worried about yeah, that. Yeah. It just anyway. like unload all the energy, like yeah. you get dopamine. It just like, just those... there's just so many positive effects, you know? Um, it's kind of it's it's kind of related to what I was talking about, like rewiring your brain to think differently. You know, uh, I I think up un- up until recently, I think it was on Joe Rogan podcast. I can't remember. He had like one of, one of the brain guys, right? And he was saying that you know up until recently, people used to think, and, and scientists in general used to think that you know, um, your brain develops up until like twenty something, maybe thirty, and then it stops, right? And then it's just like the brain cells just die. And you just, That's, you just, you're age, dead right? now. Yeah. Well, you so just, today, you just start aging today, slowly. So today is like, I'm, it's the beginning of the end for right, me. Right. Yeah. So, but the reality is like the, the plasticity of a brain like changes over time, obviously, but we, the, like the more you think and do, the more you do creative work, especially creative work. Right. And I think there was even a, uh, cause I listened to uh fighter and the kid as well. And below the belt from Brendan Schaub. Speaking about comedians, mm-hmm. like he's actually yeah. hilarious. Like he's super funny. Um, 
and he was talking about because like someone asked him like do you do you worry about cte because obviously he was a fighter like fighter. ufc fighter he got fucking knocked out so many like a couple couple of times that was like scary what, looking, you know? I, I don't know fighting what's cte cte is like uh traumatic uh, traumatic uh brain injury basically oh okay and right you, and you get like concussions and stuff yeah concussions and then like you actually uh like it just leads to your brain to deteriorate deteriorate you know there's like this huge case uh around nfl right now where you have kids like some of the kids that are playing like real hard and like they're like there was this guy who committed suicide like one of the like one of the best players like recently and they tested Whoa. his brain and at the age of 30 in, on which he committed suicide his brain was uh like the age of his brain was like 90 it was so oh, yeah. so destroyed right you were, it's you all were telling me about this it's yeah. all cte uh and so like someone asked him like hey like aren't you worried that you're going to be in the same position? And they're like, no, I actually, you know, ask like smart people about it. And if you do creative work, it actually promotes your brain to actually develop and, and your, your uh, brain cells to develop uh, and, and, and start the new ones. Right. So that's yeah, actually I true. Have... So if you do, like, if you make your brain work, you will create brain cells. So that means like you can be 50 and you can still like, obviously your brain cells are going to die over time. Like you're aging. That's, that's pretty normal. But it's it's not like it's dying and nothing else is replacing it. Like you know, you can actually replace some of those. Like you can prolong the rate of your brain to be, uh, you know, more co like cognitive in a way, right? Um, I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> no, it's 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 super good stuff, man. I think it's uh, that's really cool to hear, actually. So it's like, is that something to do with gray matter? Is that the same thing? I don't know. Uh, what, okay. What, what, where did we start with this topic? Because like, I, I feel I feel like my brain is so dead right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, our brains are so we're the fried. opposite of inflamed. I need to start doing those, those podcasts like early morning, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, no, but, but let, let, let's talk. Let's uh, let's talk about some art stuff because I think there's a lot of people. I'm just seeing a bored. lot of. No, no, not getting bored, but I think a lot of people want to tune in for some art knowledge so maybe we should talk about that stuff yeah i think i think we could loop back with the topic that was kind of ongoing and you know we were talking about sort of sort of you know how much obsessed we are about like you, you, the people you admire they have like the level of obsession about details or generally not details like oh i like to fucking chisel this you know texture sure. it's the the amount of attention you put into making sure that whatever you do is done to perfection right that's what you would consider details. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Not like, yeah, like a screw is not what I'm talking about. Like a tiny little detail. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think we're both brain dead. Yeah, that's... yeah, I think so too. <laughs> but what I was what I was trying to get at, um, you know, like I think I I, I was talking about this uh, uh, on THU like two years ago, where you know the question was like. Like what a, I, I did like a whole talk, like climbing your mountain and, and like the whole talk was about figuring out if it's for you basically. Right. Like, and what it takes to actually get there. Uh, because like, and, and we started with this, like, I hate the idea of 10,000 hours because the reality is like about a half of what we are is genetics, like mi at minimum. Right. Like genetics plays such a huge role in terms of like, whether you're smart enough to figure things out by yourself or you need that extra help, you know? Oh, do you, you think that that being an artist is genetic? Is that what you're saying? N not being an artist, genetic, like, I don't think it's purely genetic. I think genetics do matter when it comes to, like, how quickly you learn. And, um, you know, there's, there's certain aspects. You know, we have different personalities. Like, all of us think about life differently, right? And, of course, yeah. You know, there there's there's different kinds of personalities as well. I can't remember there was like in in psychology there's a list of of few traits like conscientiousness um there's like few traits, right? I think I think agreeability is like a big factor. Um oh, people are saying there's feedback coming through speakers. Weird. I shouldn't be. Am I are you hearing It might be my okay? voice being in, in your speaker but but it's only when i'm talking and you're talking at the same time so i don't know okay it's the only person 
Okay. Maybe he uh, has like two fucking windows open. He's so excited about watching the podcast. <laughs> he's open like multiple windows. <laughs> that would. <laughs> that would totally make sense. Um, I but I think maybe like because for me and I think for you, you got into art kind of late, right? Yeah, kind of. But I'll tell you this. So what I think personally is that probably about a about a half of who we are is genetics. Maybe maybe more, and then there is like how we are n- nurtured, right? So th- those two aspects are so big, in terms of like yeah. what, what your personality is gonna be. Like, there's no denying we have different personalities. If if we didn't, we would all think the same and all do the same shit. Like that's that's obviously not true. Like you have to be so detached from reality to think that way, right? Um, <clears throat> but okay, for a sake of argument, you know. There is certain part of nurture and sort of cer- certain part of genetics that bakes, basically makes you right as a person, and so that like you being you, you're gonna have different traits that will be responsible for how you react to your to to the reality and what decisions you make, right? So one of the things I hate hate hearing is like pull yourself by the bootstraps, right? Like work hard. Like I used to fucking say that, by the way. Like work hard. It's gonna be awesome. Like, th- th- I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think that's true, because like we all know, we all know those people that they will put, they will think they are working hard. For instance, right? Like, oh, I was told to work hard, so I started working hard. And you ask them like, what exactly did you do? And then you will hear like half of the tasks that they completed were completely irrelevant to what what the topic was. And yes. it's not because like they weren't trying. It's because like they didn't have sort of like the pattern of nurture that allowed you to think that that that's the way you should think and that's the way should you should explore and whatnot like you know this ongoing meme or it's not a meme really but like fucking google it for yourself people asking like absolutely retarded questions like holy shit like just google it dude use google sure. like if you type the question in google you have like a full page of answers like why you're asking me this you know what i mean yeah um, and it- I think on the maybe the other end of the spectrum, and I don't, I don't know if this is where you're going with that, but I found it so frustrating when people would just not tell you the the, the knowledge that they found because for them it was uh, like a source of pride. Yeah, I, I, they, it's definitely they, part of it. Definitely, they part worked of it. through it, and how dare you? I'm not going to tell you on purpose and. And for me, it's so frustrating for basic stuff. I think when people ask me questions, I like to be as open as possible. Yes, I use this. I did that. That's it. That's the end of the story. Oh, you want the yeah. brushes? It's it's just fucking Maché's brushes. Go get him. Uh, and I, I, think- I get if there's like a level of secrecy, if you have, you know, if the reason for it is like you have something in mind for later, you know. But it is frustrating sure. if like the most common thing, like it's it's a little different if if we're talking about, you know, let's say you're doing you're doing something that has like a specific, almost like your own sort of like juice to it, right? And um, and you want to keep it for yourself for now because like you want to do something bigger out of out of that before someone else is you know takes yeah takes yeah. that and, I, and and just like I I think that's you know like. Yeah, and I think that's a, a specific scenario, but even still, the the basic answer could be given, right? Yeah, 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 you yeah. don't have to you don't have to tell people how your anime shader works, but you are telling people this is a shader that I made in this program. Oh, right. It's, that's it's that's not, what I mean. It's not like I'm writing anything. I'm not. I'm not like no, no. writing Python scripts or whatever. I'm just using whatever is uh, like the tool that is already there. I'm just moving nodes. Like I'm just like right. connecting the right nodes in the right places. And frankly, if you look at Blender, if you look at, uh, you know, Arnold and whatnot, like you can do pretty much like 90% of what I quote unquote figured out <laughs> with right. the shader, right? All I'm saying is is that some people are afraid to just give the genuine answer. And mm. as... And just like as, walk around it, walk, walk yeah, around the answer. And, and oh, as you mean. someone who kind of learned a lot of stuff from the internet and what was available i found it so frustrating that you'd be like how do i do that how did you do that and they would just say like oh it's you know it's just those fucking there's fundamentals man there's no (laughs) tricks and there's there's 
only fucking tricks like wink wink yeah it's like come <laughs> on man it, it's just i know what you mean you're it trying you're trying to keep people down they're just asking a simple question and it's like it's it's beyond what brushes you use. You you could give them, you could actually point them in the right direction. And I try, you know, like I did like a big, uh, ask me anything on Instagram. So if, if you guys haven't seen that, just check it out on my Instagram. There's like a ton of questions there. And I, I just, I try to be as open as possible because I feel like you get it back, whatever it is. Like when, when there's a community that's nurturing, sharing, and, you know, being mm-hmm. open about stuff like that, I think it's better for everybody. Yeah. yeah that's why i'm doing this man that's why i'm doing the podcast like exactly the reason and then exactly. like, part, part of it yeah. is because i'm tired of like reading the per like you know dms and like it's just like oh my god like i it will it's there's a question that i i really want to answer because I, I know the answer but it's just like you have to think about the answer and you take it takes so much time to reply and it's just like an easy distraction and if it if it's coming daily it's it's really hard to to keep up. So like anyone who's listening is like, oh, Machi is an asshole and he doesn't reply to DMs. Like, I wish I had time to do it, you know. But you need an assistant, man. <laughs> it's it's not that I have that many of them. Like, it, okay, let's put it this way. And and you have this. I'm hundred percent sure you have this as well. Like the mom the moment you you put up some work that it becomes like really popular, and people like really enjoying it, you're gonna have uh, an influx of of questions, right? And it's just like there's a certain level in which like, oh, yeah, it's awesome to answer. It's like what you're doing specifically with Instagram is perfect. Like you are dedicating your time for that specific thing. And it's your chance to, you know, to or, or other people's chance to like have your time and your attention. Right. Um, and it's not to be dismissive. It's just like at a certain level when you're when you're so focused about business work, uh, family life, you know, nurturing your 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 health, your your personal well being, having time for friends. Like there is just so many things you, you you get stretched thin. It's like you cannot expect to ask for someone else's time and attention and be upset no, that and, they don't give you, give it that to you. They don't owe you that, right? I, w- I and I would never. I, it's not in me to ever get mad at someone for asking, like, how dare you, like, whatever. <laughs> it's it's more um i just want to do it on my own terms you know so it's yeah, like exactly if if i were to go through and give everyone a genuine answer it it, it could be like hours right like to yeah. to really help each person out so at a certain point you kind of have to do do something like that where just like oh a- ask me anything for like an hour and i'll answer it right uh because it, it can it can get out of hand Mm. I think kind of quickly, but I never mind it. It's just, you know, if, if anyone listening, you've emailed me and I didn't email you back, I'm sorry. It's just, I can, I can do it sometimes, but sometimes it's pretty hard to find the time. Yeah. I try to email, like I email or DM like people that I know, obviously, uh, the likelihood if, if I know someone, the likelihood of them answering is, is great. But, um, if I, if I, if I ask someone that I don't know personally, right and uh and i'm trying to get an information like the way i'm i personally approach this is like i'm sending this out and a tip like make it short <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very I, I, it's so e- so much easier to answer if it's if it's short but i usually just ask a quick short question and forget about it like it's something that i just it's, it's like it's a it's a message in the bottle that I just sent out to the ocean. And if it returns with the answer, awesome. If it doesn't, like, I'm not thinking about that anymore. Right. You know You're not I mean? going to like let it ruin your day. That exactly. They didn't it's like, oh, I'm going to check my email. If the person answers, it's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, if it's, I, like, on- I only will get mad if someone, if I take the time and I answer someone and then they give me a snarky response. Like, yeah. oh, you didn't answer, you didn't actually answer my question, you know? And I'm like, dude, I just wrote like two whole pages with links and advice and, you know, just general thing. I'm sorry to answer your one specific thing about the painting you're working on, but I gave you like 10,000 better ideas. Yeah. You know, that's the only time I get kind of pissed off, but I normally don't get mad. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Like going back to the original question and sort of like, you know, uh, the thing we we're talking about, I, I, I don't know, like the part, the part of people 
like not giving you like a genuine like you know there's a simple question and you have a conversation and they and they give you like a like a backhand answer like that's annoying that's that's really annoying for sure you know but what drives like and i used to again i used to say this myself a lot and it's just like over time the more i've learned about you know once you i'll tell you this once you have a kid you you start to think about people a little different because um you see like from how basic level you have to communicate for them to understand and learn right and yeah and it's mind blowing how how low you have to get like you have to go to the, like it's 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 like talking to a fucking kitten something like or even lower than that you know what i mean um so so and once you see the path of it it's like you start to understand a little bit a little bit more that we are so different as people and like there's so many aspects in life there's just like you know like the time when uh, when i was back at naughty dog and we would would do it to each other like we would do pranks uh to each other like if you un- left your computer unlocked it was granted you can have dick pictures in your in your psd file and very likely hundreds of layers that are there for no reason <laughs> oh the, the decoy layers the decoy layers so like good luck finding shit good, good find it yeah <laughs> so I, I feel like we are kind of like that layer system like those decoy layers right there's just so many layers to every answer you can get right because like i can tell you like work hard and and learn fundamentals for for a person that that understands a little bit of, about art and and has a skill to or someone told them to have a skill to search stuff, right? Like even searching correct correct words, like correct keywords, can just make or break the way you f- you you find the answers, right? I think so, yeah. So if if you don't know how to do it, and 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 most likely, a vast majority of us do not know how to do it. Like ask any ar- artist a question, how to be good at business. Or like, where would you find the answer? How to be good at business? Like, I can, I can, and that's including myself. I can guarantee you, <laughs> a vast majority. If if you would put like a legit business person in front of artists and and have them like comment on what they are searching for, that person would be like, oh my god, you guys are so stupid. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, I only know art. I don't know how to do anything else. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm so, clueless. So so to me, it's like. If, if you're and that you know that that kind of preachy approach that oh like we all can be artists like all you have to do is you just have to work hard or you know um like th- those kind of que- th- those kind of answers to me are like lazy you know and yeah I, and I've i disagree learned, too i don't think i don't think all it takes is hard work because i know people that work hard and they're doing all the wrong things yeah so they've been just been doing it wrong for 10 years and struggling and they art is just as bad as it was 10 years ago. I know plenty of people like that. And I'm like, there's something with you as a person where you're not actually listening to what I'm saying or what everyone is telling you. You're kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you nod your head and yeah. then you don't do it, actually. But you're just you're kind of stuck in this loop and you got to break out. And um, I think for me, the best advice just as in general was whoever you like, just listen to them because (laughs) there's too many people, there's too many people and there's too many opinions and conflicting ideas. Right. So just find the artists where you're like, I would like my work to fit somewhere in the realm of these artists and just listen to what they say. Because if you listen, if you, ask a general poll and you ask all of Facebook or all of ArtStation, oh, what should I do to learn this? You're going to get 5,000 different answers. So you need to decide for yourself and commit, oh, it's this, these kinds of pieces I want in my portfolio. So I'm going to track down who did them and whatever they say to do, I'm going to fucking follow it. Like, did you ever see that movie Burnt? No. It's like Bradley Cooper, he's a chef, but there's the, just an awesome moment where he's like, all you're supposed to say is yes, chef. I tell you to do something, you say yes, chef. Mm. That's it. So it's like, whatever these people say, 
yes chef it that's it yeah it's like a master and apprentice kind of deal exactly because if you're saying i trust them i love their work i want it to look like that but then you don't fucking listen to what they say and you're like why can't mine look like maches like take his fucking class and do what he says that's the answer yeah you know i remember taking ash's class and you know i would i would look at the like the ui and the uh, data design and i was like dude this is so simple like i want to try something more complex and he was like always like just like berating me it's like shut the fuck up just do what it, what i say <laughs> it's, it's like, like just do oh. what's in the class and um. <laughs> and i you know I, the moment i i was trying to do it cuz i thought it was better to do it that way the moment that i did that i would hit the wall it's like oh i'm stuck I don't know what to do next. And then the moment I would come back, I was like, let's just follow the class. I, I know it's simple. I know it's, you know, st- some of those things kind of, kind of feel standard, but there's like a m- the method to this madness, you know? Yeah, and I think when you're in the a state of learning, like don't be the fucking maverick. Like don't be Top Gun all of a sudden just because you're taking a class and you're like, oh, I know better. Like be humble for a second. Just listen to what they have to say and do it. And then after you can decide if you would do it a different way. But if you're coming to someone and you're you're especially in that case you're paying for a class about UI design from like one of the best guys. Just maybe just give him a second and listen to what he has to say, you know, before you like fly off the rules and stuff. Yeah. You know what else grind my, grind my gears? I I generally avoid reading comments like fire and it's I know it sounds harsh but I just at this point I just have to because any like I I, I have a question if you have the same experience but you know you post something and like half of the answer is going to be like it looks like xyz fill in the blank your favorite pop culture whatever icon right it can be whatever like a random pop culture icon that someone feels like like whatever you just did looks like that or an advice oh you should do this that way instead you know? oh and then you go on okay. the profile of that person it's like oh you, you don't even do art <laughs> you know what i mean i i love how petty you are where you're like clicking and you're like who the fuck is this person i'm gonna learn know, everything about I, them i'm gonna deconstruct I used to, them i used to do that i used to do that i don't do it anymore it's just like i just literally don't read comments and like like i sometimes kind of like glance through because sometimes in comments you can find like really interesting questions right and and I like answered answering those, but it's just like I just cannot. Yeah, I I just cannot, man. Like it I, looks I like think... X Y and it's like oh okay oh okay like everything looks like X Y and Z to you. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe I think you get that a lot more than I probably do, but I guess for me maybe because of the character work, yeah. Yeah, I think you know people are like not gonna be like oh your rock looks like a rock. Cool. <laughs> Reminds me of this rock I saw. Reminds me, Reminds me of the rock that I saw somewhere. Um, but I think when people do say that, I I'm not super bummed. I, I I'm kind of like cool. Like I made you think of a thing that you also think is cool. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, I think it reminded you of Shadow of the Colossus. Like awesome. I love mm-hmm. that. So that's cool. Thanks for saying that. You know. I I think sort of like the the evolution for me for that was like, oh, like if you think that way. Um, you know, like, like, uh, well, if it looks like something, then yeah, it's like a little different story. But like, if someone tells you like, oh, you should do it that way, it's exactly coming back to the same comment that I did. Like, okay, like I was learning Ash's class and not taking the lesson and, and trying to tell someone who's trying to give me a genuinely like an answer what to do. And then like, oh, no, no, no. Like, that's not what I wanted to hear. Let's just correct you because I know better, you know? Like oh, that, yeah. that, okay. that pisses me off. Not anymore. Sure. It's just like, I, f- I think going back to like the traits and everything we talked about, like, don't be that person. Like, don't be a person no. that yeah. you go to seek for an advice. You find a person that, that gives you their attention. And then you just like, just like, a <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, Wah. because you're like, why, why are you asking me? Yeah. Then? You yeah. know, I took time out of out of my day to answer you and I'm, I'm trying to help you i'm not being your enemy here and then why are you disregarding what i said or you know and i think 
I actually made a chart of what are the qualities that a good artist has. Oh, you did? Uh, I, yeah, I can. Curious let me uh, let me open it and read it. I'm curious to see or hear. Dom, 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 dead air. Sorry, I'm I'm just sending <laughs> it to you so you can put it on the screen because I don't oh, want to okay. just read it. Uh, but it's called "How Not to Suck at Art." Where did you send it? Uh, I'm sending it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Let me pull it up. But this was sort of what I was talking about. Like, what's the the um, kind of common trends that I found with people that I thought were awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's just like different categories of like that same sort of thing, like not being argumentative when you get a critique or when you ask for advice, I think is like such a good quality. And I always think, you know, what if, if John or Nick or somebody like that, how would they respond if you gave them good advice? They're never going to be like, well, actually, <laughs> uh, it, they're always going to be like, Oh yeah. Awesome, dude. Like, cool. Yeah. John would be like that. It's like, Oh, like he's always like, Oh, so cool. <laughs> Because they're they're excited, they're passionate. So like it's John Sweeney, so, by the way, the person we're talking yeah. about, the art director of uh, Naughty Dog. Right. The art director of Naughty Dog, no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. Dude, I remember. Uh, um, I remember yeah. John like when he before he joined, I, Shaddy sent was sending me his work. It's like, oh my god, this looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually doing Look. overpaints for him back then look who's laughing now now he's just like blasting dude john is awesome I love yeah that guy. he's great he's a great art director too so attitude uh, taking criticism okay failing remaining positive self-identity problems what's the last self, one self-identifying oh, problems so, oh, so that, oh, like oh my god that's <laughs> not identity reading skills it's, dude <laughs> <laughs> uh, your your thing is words mine is numbers it's okay um, but self-identify problems means if you are like constantly working at something and the feedback is always like, hey, dude, you really need to work on your colors. And then you continue to ignore that. You're not like identifying that that's a problem for you and doing something to take care of that. Yeah. So they're like, if you're bad at colors, you need to go do studies until you're good at colors. Or you need to go plain air painting or go fix the problem. Or if people keep saying, every painting you show them hey dude your anatomy is off your anatomy is off over and over again like stop doing paintings go do some study identify the problem and fix it mm -hmm. and that's what most people i think at the top of their game kind of do they're like oh i don't have this kind of thing in my portfolio so they go do that or i'm not go that good at this thing i'm weaker with that so they they try a piece to fix that mm -hmm. and they're okay failing it means like when you suck at something, like we said before, when you level one, you're like, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to get better. Like, I'm going to learn. And you're not, like, totally defeated by the idea of failure. You're like, fine. It's good to suck because that means I get, I get to get better. You know what I would say about that whole attitude part? Because, like, I agree with everything you just said. Like, I, I think everyone who's sane should agree with that or would agree with that. But I feel like you can encompass this with saying if you can do all of those four things, that means you are a person that can learn, like you have an ability to learn, basically. And I, I, I feel the ability to learn, like the fact that you, you, you're like there's no ego involved. You, you recognize your, the level you're at. You recognize, you know, the patterns of where the industry is going, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're, you're just cu curious about, you know, exploring new things. Or maybe someone told you a critique and you're taking that critique and then like applying yourself to it. And then you start to learn new things, right? I think that ability is what what's going to be the most important ability in like next 10, 15 years for us. Yeah. And I think when it's, when someone critiques me, I also want to kill them. So like, <laughs> how dare you, right? How but dare you? It, that feeling goes away, I think, very quickly for us. And you're like, 
oh yeah do i'm am i actually going to listen to what they have to say you know am i going to like remain positive through that yeah and like i'm not taking it super personally they're not trying to attack me and tell me to quit they're just saying like this part of your painting doesn't read correctly they're trying to help you like if you can see there's many different ways to see what someone's saying and you know on one end you can see everything as kind of threatening and hurtful or you're like try to see it in the most positive light yeah oh they're trying to help me or you know when they're saying oh this reminds me of xyz they're saying that in a to mean a good thing probably they're not probably trying to piss you off yeah if someone it's if you are talking with an artist that is clearly accomplished right and that person is giving you time to answer your questions it, you can expect that in the vast majority of cases, unless there's some weird grudge that happened for whatever reason, like even if the, the answer sounds like, oh my God, this guy is an asshole, unless it's like a backhand answer too, right? It's like, oh, like you should vote, like, you know, that kind of shit. Um, yeah, there's a couple, you know, art enemies out there that we like, whatever, you just yeah, tune but, them out. But as you said, genu gen generally, the person will try to give you a genuine answer. Whether you like it or not, you can take it or leave it, right? But yeah. that's their assessment yeah. of you from the outside perspective, not from your own, you know, filtered view of the world in a way. And it can hurt. Yeah, of course. Of course it hurts because it's your baby and you're like, I fucking made this. Yeah. How dare you? This is my actual baby. I created this from my mind. And you're you're talking shit. How dare you? I mean, that's one way to see it. Or you can can be like, oh, everyone's pretty cool, and they're trying to help me. That's awesome. Yeah, that's true, dude. That list is good. It looks fucking awesome. I like that list. I I think it's I think it's everything in a general term. Yeah, for anyone, like, cause like, there's my, maybe quite a few people that's gonna listen to this afterwards. So there's like four categories: attitude, excitement, focus, and intake. So attitude would be taking criticism, okay, failing, remaining positive, self-identifying self problems. Then excitement would be passion to your, for your field, experimenting, feeding your imagination, caring about your work. Focus would be discipline, discipline, motivation, dedicating time, having an objective, and then intake, reading, learning, the directed study, blah, 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 all that stuff, that inspiration to follow. Um, yeah, all that, all that stuff is good, man. Um, you know, like I was like, work hard, <laughs> like yeah. the backhand answer is like, work hard. <laughs> but like the, yeah, the proper just... answer is like, yeah. So there's like certain fields that if you follow them and you do them meticulously, like day after day after day without, you know, uh, without failing or like, obviously you're going to fail, but, but just like putting the actual effort into it, like the worst thing that can happen is that you're going to be better than you were yesterday. That's the worst yeah, scenario. I think a lot of people get caught up when they're starting out or, you know, in the beginning about comparing themselves to, you know, their their North Star artists, you know, like their top people. And they're like, how am I ever going to get there? And I think it can be destructive when you think about stuff like that. And I see it more as use them as inspiration but the person you should compare it to is someone at your level or even yourself. Compare yourself to where you were a year ago and see what you're doing now. That's what you should be excited about. Don't be comparing yourself to people that have been doing this for like 10, 15 years and you just started, right? That's not yeah. fair playing field. Like you should say, you should relish in the fact that like one month ago, you didn't know how to draw an apple and now you drew an apple. Like that's fucking cool way to go now do it again and just kind of extrapolate from that imagine where you're going to be in one year 10 years right it's it's kind of exciting when you think about it that way just i think take every sort of negative feeling there's always some sort of positive optimistic outlook on that because for me the negative stuff is not helping to motivate me yeah i don't you know? i don't think it's it's a negative thing to, to think like i'm worse than the top guy that i'm that's my hero right and I want to be like that person, but I'm not today. And as long as you have like a healthy relationship with that, with that feeling saying like, this guy is awesome. I'm not, will take me yeah. a lot of time to get there. Absolutely. And there's a likelihood that will never get there. No, I, I never, okay with that. 
I'm never going to be as good as the people I idol. It's like, I, I know that's not going to happen, but it is for me more of an inspiration that there is a, a goal in mind, even if that goal keeps moving because they're going to get better at the same rate that I'm getting better usually. Yeah. So it's just for me more of like a fun inspiration thing. But the second it starts turning into like beating myself up, like, oh, you're such a piece of shit. You can't draw clouds <laughs> like Jamie Jones, you fucking idiot. I don't let that ever happen. I'm just like, those are the goal clouds for my life to have clouds like that. And I'm just going to keep pushing and look how much better my clouds got this year versus last year. That's kind of yeah. how I take it. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you practice and, and push and, you know, practice that, that exactly that, you know, just practice the idea of getting better. It, it, it will, it will get you to to that better level of yourself like there's you would have to be i don't know who you would have to be or how wrong you would have to approach things to do something that will improve your work like study take criticism like all of those things we just we just discussed and then the next day or week or month be in the worse shape than you were before that it's just like it's in, in, inimaginable to happen right yeah, I don't think you go backwards, really. Yeah, like, you I, never I, do. I, like, unless I you think... stop, then you you can argue that because the world is moving, you kind of are, you know, technically you, going backwards stop, or something. If you stop, you might be rusty, but you're never going to get, like, years worse. It's impossible. You have, like, all this memory and skill still. I don't, I don't think it goes away that quickly, right? It does not. You get rusty for sure, and, you know, all it takes is just, like, Re, like repracticing the the elements that you've lost and forgot you know every now and then I, I try to do like those like small personal challenges like last year i did this you know painting series of that w woman you know with the with the wolf and whatnot i was right. trying to prove to myself that i can still paint <laughs> <laughs> you're so like you're so far into 3d but, land but but, like, but, but listen doing. like all the, the stuff i've showed it's like okay you, you could argue it looks good or not whatever um but I did some some sketches before that looked like absolute garbage. It was just discarded. Um, so it's, it's not like it was like what... one trick point. Like oh shit! Like I was just like spitting out those images. Awesome. No, like I did a couple of sketches. They were not turning out great. But then I focused and like redid it or did it another day, and it like actually worked. You know. My f my favorite thing is when you tell me you failed at something. Finally, there's there's a. Fucking I fail all the time, brother. <laughs> No, All and I think time. it's it's refreshing for other people to hear too. Is that that is part of the process? Like, but back to the beginning, like fucking Kevin Hart is one of the best, and he's still saying it takes five hours to condense to one hour of funny material. Oh so it's yeah, like it's yeah. it's never going to go away. But that's just how you work through problems, and you you're going to sketch until you get it right. But it you have that that gene in you that wants to keep trying. Because yeah. you know in the end you're going to do well. You have confidence and you know, I, I can do this. Like, I got this. I'm. It sucks right now, but I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. As someone mentioned, you know, an interesting, like, annoying critique where someone is telling telling you critique. It was a uh, phantom in chat. And it's like, you know, it's annoying when, when you give a critique, but they don't explain the critique. And they're just saying stuff that the new artist that does not understand, you know, is and and that's sort of like comes back to like, oh, work hard, you know, <laughs> oh, like do this, you're gonna be get, yeah. get awesome. It's like, and I I am angered by that too, and that's like why, as much as I try, like I will make slides like this for workshops and stuff because I'm sick and tired of like going and paying for a workshop where I don't learn anything, and it's yeah. just to kind of like go see someone show me something that's online already like there's no no personal touch to it or you know ideas behind it uh and i think for me i try to boil everything down to like really basic ideas because i think for beginner artists it is really hard there's like a huge gap before you're ready to like learn all this stuff and there's not a lot of information about it yeah so it, for me i try to always explain the the thinking behind something, the the why, the reason I'm doing something rather than the technical, oh, it's this program and I did this, this and that. I'm just saying the reason I put the light here is because I want to draw your eye to this part of the composition. And, you know, like really simple 
building blocks of how to make an image. Mm. Yeah. I think I think if you and like looking at this list, obviously it's a good one, right? I think I think if you take everything like with one step at a time, you, you know, again, like you cannot get worse. Like you can only get better. You just have to practice yeah. that. And you just have it's to exciting. have like a positive, positive mind. You have like, I think, and you know, I haven't done jujitsu in a while. I'm, I'm thinking about going back. It's just like, to me, it's like, I need to sort of like rump myself up. I have a, I have this problem and that's sort of my personality trait. And that's one of the reasons why I often takes like longer breaks from things like, you know, running an art cafe, for instance, right? I took, I took a break for like six, seven months. I haven't done any podcasts. Uh, for six, seven months is because when I latch on something and that's my personality trait, I, I always try to be best at it. For, and, and I know I will never be in, in a lot of, a lot of fields. Like I can try to be the best at freaking anime shit or whatever, or, or painting or 3d. I'm more of a generalist when it comes to art. So, so I don't think I'll ever reach a moment where whatever I do is so freaking mind blowing. That it's like on that Vitali level for, for hard surface or, or it's that on that, you know, visual art direct art direction level in which, you know, Ash operates on, right? Like he has such a amazing eye for producing stuff and a lot of stuff, yeah. stuff he does himself, by the way. So that's that, like, that's even, what's, What's so inspiring about you guys is, is like, there is no point. There is no project. There's no thing where you're going to be like, now I'm, I'm hanging it up. I've arrived. It's done now. You just, you're constantly pushing to do a new thing. Yeah. Cause you're just excited. That's your personality. You're so excited about a new thing and getting really fucking good. And then you're like, I've learned enough. I soaked it all up now onto the next thing. Now I'm going to be a fucking race car driver. Yeah. But the one thing that you have to remember and, I have troubles with that a lot of time. Uh, I try to get better at it. I think Ash specifically is, I think he's a master of persistence. Everything he does, like he latches on an idea of doing something and he does it to perfection and then finish the project. It's like what Kevin Hart said, like, I'm not going to quit. Like his mother told him or his parents told him that he can start a hobby or like be in the baseball club or whatever. But if he's going to quit, they're like they're not gonna let him quit you're gonna fucking stay for a whole year and do this and we'll right. make you like you yeah, signed I up think... for it finish it like don't be the yeah. don't be a person that starts and doesn't never finish and i think it's very hard to get that that trait in yourself like start something and then have enough gumption to actually follow through and like go through the pain of doing something and then finishing it because i can guarantee and I, you know, I talk with Ash all the time and like all of the films that he released, there's always a pattern. He starts super excited, like showing me cool shit. And like at the end of it, it's like, I fucking hate this stuff. Like it's <laughs> killing me. I want to sure. die. But he's still finishing that stuff, you know? Um, of course. I think the passion and the the inspiration, that that's fleeting. You know, it, it will go away, but it yeah. does come down to like being motivated to finish because, you know, in the end, it's going to be worth it. And it's going to suck for a little while because you're burnt out and you're sick of looking at the same thing or you want to just try something else. But yeah, finishing stuff is is really valuable, I think, to just see it through the end, even if it's not as good as you wanted it to be. But to actually say yeah. it's done, it's not perfect, but it's done. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, we've been talking for two hours. Oh, do we have like four more hours? I mean, we, I can fucking stay a whole night if you want to. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> this, uh, I hope everyone's inspired. <laughs> but you, you are like, uh, how, how, how uh, early you go to bed these days? I mean, if you're waking up like 830, uh, I would assume like 12 would be like the latest. You kind of want to have like yeah. that eight hour sleep, huh? Yeah, I, I, I wake up at like uh, 745 or 730. But That's yeah, dope. I'm usually in, in bed no later than midnight. I used to be a night owl. That's the thing. I totally like, I had to train I myself. I am that. <laughs> yeah, I, w I, would, I would not go to bed before two because I felt like I didn't do enough. Dude, two is when it, the night starts, brother. 
I know you're a night owl too. I have a problem though. Like I genuinely, genuinely, I I do have to work on that because I caught myself in numerous occasions where I was like so sleep deprivated. I was hallucinating, and that was just my own, (laughs) my own doing. Like in last, in last six months, I had two occasions where I only slept an hour in forty eight hours. And You're it's be- insane, man. but it, it wasn't by choice. It was by by just like lack of self control. Let's put it this way, right? And it was like mostly because I would postpone, like just do wrong decisions, wrong wrong planning decisions, and then something would happen, right? And then you're fucked because because now yeah. it's like piling up. Um, so you know, I do, I do. Thankfully, I do still have energy to like pull it through <laughs> and get shit done. But it's like. Those were like for me opening moments, and, and when you were saying about waking up early, I, it's something I have to really start practicing. Like I have to figure out the way where I'm not sitting. Because here's the problem with sitting sitting up late, and you know this for sure, because that's the reason why you stop. It's like if there's 2 a.m. and you're so deep into doing something that you forget the time is flying, and then it's now 3 a.m., 4 a.m. It's like oh shit, I'm not gonna have enough sleep, and then it's just like a cascade of of wrong decisions from there. Because la- now you're sleep deprivated. Now you're not having enough sleep. You have to wake up because you're gonna have like you you have responsibilities next day that you have to do no matter what. You can't you cannot just like I'm gonna sleep. Like this I have to exactly, go to work. Yeah, this is exactly why I stopped because at maybe one a.m. my brain just can't function and I'm being so much, you know, like n- so much less productive than I was like an hour ago, and I'm it's taking me like two or three times longer to make decisions and stuff like that. But on the flip side, when I wake up, I'm at my most energetic and I'm like not burnt out at all. I'm ready to go and I'm inspired. And for me, it's much better to like get lost in the morning and then be like, oh shit, it's time for work rather than just like sleeping in from my previous 2 a.m. You know, dump that and yeah. just like struggling all night alone. But I don't know. So it just there's feels an explanation to that. Apparently, again, that's something I really need to research because I heard it from videos and who fucking knows if the videos are right or, or not. But I've heard enough videos saying that. And I don't know if it's like echo chamber of people repeating that stuff or not. But there's like apparently there's like different states of mind in your brain, depending on like how when you wake up, like w- w- what is your like wake up cycle and going to sleep cycle, all that stuff. Right. There's like an alpha and theta state and each of the states give you a different brain function. When we wake up, apparently we we're supposed to be the most creative because we're like the, the, the brain is sort of like, I don't know, there's some ca- kind of chemicals released that just makes you more creative. Technically, I don't know if that's true, but I've heard about it and it is it kind of aligns to what you're saying, right? Like anecdotal evidence would be Aton wakes up early and does more work in two hours than sitting up late and sitting for four hours you know that could sure. be like a, a layman answer is like oh that's an anecdotal evidence to that i just need i i, I really want to research about those things Here, we're gonna do part two at some point and you're gonna research all the stuff you said and we'll talk i need next to time. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha potato states I, i'm, I'm you, actually you curious wanna, if it's true do you want to do like a couple questions and then we'll wrap up yeah, we, we should do that because we've been talking for a while. I normally you run like podcast for like an hour, but it's a comeback podcast. And uh, I like I like the longer format anyway. We should do a next one like maybe early. Yeah, sounds good. Like maybe over like early in the weekend or like before you go to work or something. I don't know. Yeah, I can do mornings. That's fine. Yeah. All right. So let's see. There's a bunch of there's actually a ton of questions. I just have to scroll through them. Where, where's your Jamie? Question time. Yeah, where's my Jamie, dude? Where's my chin, dude? Where's my chin? <laughs> yeah, you haven't watched the uh, the Fighter and the Kid, yeah? No, I have not. That's such a funny podcast, dude. It's uh, it's Brandon Schaub and Brian Callen. Yeah, I I, I I think I watched one episode, but yeah, I want to watch more of it. They're such a goofballs, dude. They have like this uh, Asian guy. Who's like sitting like he's the worst when it comes to googling shit. Mm. <laughs> it's like to a point where they're like making fun of him all the time. Like the audience is making fun of them, uh, of him. Um, all right, let's just like go through some of them. 
Uh, I'll just go chrono chronologically. Um, want to know if Aton is working on the next gum road on color and lighting topic. No, I'm taking a break right now, doing personal work. Uh, hey, Aton and Mache, I've been always wondering this. How uh, do you all feel about bad producers or as Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. Guillermo. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro puts in, in the, the bastards with the money might be a touchy subject. Um, bad producers. I don't know. I feel, I feel like we talked about producing, right? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of did. I, I, it's all across the board. It's if you, I, I'll put it this way: it's not producers specifically. It's, it's having the right people doing the right job. You yeah, know? it's not the producer is not the problem. It's having a bad producer. I think, yeah, is, and you, like you a... will always have bad producers. You will have bad directors. You have bad art directors. I've, I recently worked with a person that I thought was, really like. I worked with that person before for like a short period of time and it was cool. And then I had the most bizarre experience ever and I will never work with that person ever. Mm. You know what I mean? That happens. That happens too. That um, definitely happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the major key to successful environment? Dude, don't, uh, don't pollute. It's... Solar power. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, it's it's a big question. Uh, I did I answered that on my Instagram. So check out for like a more thorough answer. But I think uh, like a good environment conveys the mood, the story, the lighting, the color, the types of uh, vegetation or architecture that will be prototypes for the modelers to make. So you're giving lots of hints and ideas of what they could fill the level with. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's got a awesome like cinematic feel to it. Uh, it's got a good composition, good shapes. You almost yeah. think you could make a class about that, right? <laughs> Don't start. Don't you start. <laughs> uh, there was a continuation of the previous questions. Like also, what do you have any advice for a 19 year old that just dropped out out of a crappy art college to focus on um, environment concept art portfolio for AAA studios. Uh, it's great that you identified that your school was not good and you left. That's awesome. So I think uh, at this point, give yourself uh, like a pretty good schedule and split it up so that you're not burning out too much. So do like a day where you're learning 3D, a day where you're practicing design or drawing, a day where you're doing a concept for your portfolio, uh, mm. like a, one, one plain air study day, one free day, like just give yourself uh, some space to grow and don't just like try and mash it out and paint six days a week, eight hours a day and just expect that to be awesome. Like it's You're going to burn out pretty hard, but make yeah. your own school basically and if you can take some online classes, learn Square. Of or, course. Uh, if you can, if you can manage, you know, get get to LA and take some concept schools in person. Meet other artists that are going through your situation and make friends. Make a super team. Get good. I'll go go on a limb and say this: it, every single college out there right now for artists. Like if you are going to college thinking that your diploma is going to matter, you are wasting your life. You are wasting your life, your time, your money. The biggest, especially for you, for U.S. students, like in Europe, Asia, like I don't know how it is in Asia, uh, you know, in Europe and, and, and other places where education is basically free, uh, you know, uh, college education, unless you go to a private school. But in in U.S., if you decide to take a hundred thousand dollars loan uh, i'll give you a straight answer to that and i don't know if you already t took that or not but if you don't finish the school or if you don't realize that you're let's put it this way that you have to take the right if you take th the loan like that you have to take the right almost perfect uh choice have to make perfect choices in order for you for it uh to pay out and there is way more risky options out there because the problem yeah. with the loans is that you're fucked if you if you if you if you don't have a job, you are. This is the loan that will never go away. You cannot bankrupt on it. 
You can you can take a loan as a company and go bankrupt, and you're fine. You, you you're taking a student loan. You, they they are not gonna give you like oh you're fine you can back no 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 like you're gonna pay it until you pay it. They'll they'll find a way for you to pay it, and that's the problem. Right. And the reality is, there is, I would say. Like how much how much the loans are are, are, are right now? Like if you want to finish um, any of the any of the big uh, colleges, like how much it's, you think it's how much the loan would be? Like how many like? It was a hundred and twenty thousand when you were when I went. I'd imagine it's maybe one fifty now. So one. To, to, yeah, if you if you instead just spent ten thousand dollars on your education, you could take every learn squared class and take a bunch of classes in person and buy still all the even... gum roads all yeah the pe- you could sign you could up get for all the everything Patreons and get a computer so and i think on on the other side of things for visa situations where you want to work in a different uh country the college can be helpful but i would recommend not, i would just it's actually oh, not, it's not because okay. because what happens is like let's say you want to be in the u.s and like oh i'm gonna to go to college and get my degree and then I can stay that that's not going to happen like you are sure. the 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 student visa ends with your school being done and you have to get the fuck out basically i think there is like extension programs where you can stay for like a year and then you can roll it over to like worker visa if you get hired but that's only if you get hired if you're not getting hired you have 2 weeks to get out and if you don't you're going to get banned from entry for like 10 years right like they're uh, all, super all, strict all, about that shit all i was gonna say is i'm just i point many people to your art cafe with uh alex and the uh visa yeah, lawyer yeah, yeah 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 so i don't know the answer is what i'm saying and just check out the video with the experts because i just point everyone to that video i, I don't know about visas but I would for us say, people you don't need to go to college i would say reward risk reward factor for college for me does not make sense anymore no, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Next um, question. Unless the college is stacked with like famous artists that work in the industry. Which one's that? I, is there any? Where, where, where does this college exist? Yeah. Like unless there are people that are actively working on your favorite games and movies that are your teachers on a daily basis. Yeah. Forget about it. Because like a lot of people that and that, you know, once you start teaching and you, you, you put effort to it, it's like being a teacher is great right um but you, you still have to maintain the connection to the to the reality like the, the if you're teaching something you have to practice it you cannot just teach something that you practiced a while ago and think that's just gonna stick it will stick and it will deceive people basically right but the world is moving on like the amount of knowledge that that rolls through the amount of software changes that we've seen past 10 years how hardware changed like now now people doing VR concepts for 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 the love of God, right? People using 3D all the time. Like it's just, sure. just go on art station and you see the quality bar is way higher. Like work that was done 10 years ago that was considered amazing. Now it's just like an entry level because it's just so easy to learn stuff like that and do it more uh, efficiently with the software and tools that you have at your at your disposal. So. The availability of knowledge is out there. And the problem with colleges is that they're still sticking to that very old school mentality. And they cost shit ton of money. So it's a good choice, man. Like, I I don't know. Like, I feel like not having a debt is better than... Because, like, 150000 it's going to be years until you until you get rid of that. Like, you have to be a cre- the creme la creme of artists to make enough money to actually get rid of that after like five ten years like you really yeah, have to be really fucking it, good yeah because there's no guarantee from art school there's no like you're not just getting a job because you went to art school it's yeah. like i i when i taught at otis i said for your major 10 of you will get jobs five of you will get good jobs, and then within that five probably three of you will get awesome jobs and one of you will get that's like every year probably that breakdown yeah all right let's go like a little more rapid fire because we kind of went uh long on that one um 
What's the best subject to learn art as a beginner? Is there a type of drawing from reference or from life, copying, or more from imagination? You can just do, do like a quick answer on that. Um, I think a little bit yeah, of everything, I, yeah? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what you like. So just, uh, just try a little bit of everything. There's no point um, deciding now if you're starting out. Just try a little bit of everything and see what you like. You'll, yeah. you'll find a way. You know, you'll, you'll find out what you like by doing it. Yeah, just stick to those principles that eight and like we've shown about, <laughs> you know, imagination. Yeah, just have, have, have the good the good work ethic and stuff, and, and yeah. just try stuff. We kind of like discussed about that throughout the yeah. podcast. Uh, yeah. How do you move on to color once you finish the black and white sketch? Any tips? There's um, so many so, techniques, right? Yeah, I, I'm just saying. For me, I I don't do the black and white and like convert it into color. It's the sketch for layout. So I kind of start, start over from the, yeah. what the sketch is. And then I will either move into 3d and make it exactly like my sketch, or I'm taking the sketch and replacing assets with color. So wherever the light is, I'm, I'm painting opaquely what the color of the light is. Mm -hmm. I'm not like doing like overlays or color balance to get it to look Good. I, I think that doesn't look super good for me when I try yeah. it. So I, I just start over. Same, same. Like I, I rarely do black and white sketches, but if I would do like if when I do them, I do exactly same. I kind of like replace everything. I would start with like with the sky and then that gives me lighting information and then sort of like go from there, you know? Yeah. Um, do you ever want to get into character art rather than doing environments? What's your bucket list for career in the industry? Um, yeah, I, I started wanting to do characters and I eventually shift to environment. I don't think I'll ever do characters primarily, but I will probably, you know, feature figures more into my work and more like cinematic keyframes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, the environments are, I'll, I'll never not be interested in environment. That's it. Can you describe the hiring process for foreign, foreign freelancers? How contracts are signed, how payments are made? How to pro uh, how to project yourself from f protect yourself from fraud? Uh, Sorry, how I, have, I have no idea. I'll answer like real quick. This is like a separate topic that could be done. Uh, never do any work without contract. Like unless it's a huge, huge studio, and you know, like there's certain level of trust if you work with real, real big clients that you can expect. Like really big clients rarely ever just go on the limb to fuck you. That's rarely ever happens. It can happen sometimes. I had my fair share of troubles with, you know, digital domain. <laughs> was like some external issues related to it, but, oh, but still. Yes. You mean that time we both got sued? Almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a long story. Um, but the best, the best thing you can do is, like, I try to avoid, like, fire. Like, a small niche, like weird like not small niche weird people let's put it let's put it in a different way yes um, individuals i think is not a good idea to work if if there are people if there are words in your conversation with the client that entail things like exposure low budget we are on x y and z budget blah 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 fill in the blanks that kind of like give you red flags just think if it's worth it if it's worth your time because from my experience working with and that that's my experience as a business person as well like if you're a small business right you are really really you really carefully spend money like you don't have exuberant amount of uh, money that you can spend throwing on shit and just like oh yeah whatever because that's the budget um you have like limited budget to do stuff and so clients that are not big studios are usually more demanding than the big clients big clients were mo most likely not you know fuck you over always have a contract always make a make sure that in a contract it says exactly when you're supposed to be paid taxes you pay taxes in, in the country you live in and so they like a u.s company for instance like they would just uh send you they they, they it's like i think w8 or something that you have to fill out so that they 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 are exempt from taxation or whatever there's like some there's some certain uh tax laws that people have to like companies have to uh, obey to in us but generally like 
if a company in US that is hiring you as a freelancer will tell you like, oh, we actually have to pay taxes and so you're gonna get less money, that's bullshit. Like you should never buy into that because the reality is like they don't pay any taxes. For them, it's a, it's, a, it's an expense. And that's, that's actually a truth pretty much everywhere. So you pay taxes where you live basically. And if you're a freelancer and you're doing a job like a work on hire and if you're not like a uh, full-time person then you are paying taxes not the employer so yeah it's just like always have a contract and and, and just be careful like what, what kind of people you work with you cannot protect protect yourself 100 percent because there's like certain certain barrier of, of like you know are you gonna spend thousands of dollars to sue a person that it is just gonna take years and it's gonna take more money than you than you lost like that probably not you know so yeah you can't yeah you can't track someone down if you're working especially for like an overseas client there is a risk built into that if you don't if you're not familiar with their company and they're not a big company it, it could be kind of risky and usually when they sign contract with you it, it requires if it's a if it's a company that does contract correctly it will require you to actually sue them in the in the in the place that they live in that means you have to hire if it's like a California based company, you have to hire a lawyer in California, which is going to cost a lot of money. It's just like there's certain reasons not to do it, you know? So just, just yeah. be, be ca cautious and careful. Um, Let's move on. How, uh, Machi, how long did you take, uh, did it take you, uh, take for you to get your breakout job as a self taught artist? Uh, it's been a couple of years. I, I've I don't want to spend too much time on this because uh, we kind of want to go through other questions. But if you listen to other podcasts, I've been talking about this like so many times. Yeah, yeah, you've you've talked about that a lot. Do you take uh, courses outside of visual art category? Oh, me personally, uh, yeah, I think I have not taken courses, but I think interests in other things definitely. There's a feedback loop, and it all will will feed into something related to art eventually so yeah you know watching super cool documentaries or like learning about photography or filmmaking it's not you know directly what you're doing but it will help you a lot in different ways that would surprise you i think but i just i'm curious about a lot of stuff so i just watch and learn stuff all the time yeah i'll do one more question uh kind of scrub through but i'll do one more because we, we want to kind of wrap it up at this point. You you have to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, I fucking saw like a good one. Let's see where it is. Gosh, I missed it. I just saw like a really good question. And I missed it. Oh, there it is. Do you ever have moments um, where you take time to study something, but when you put it into practice it feels like you didn't advance in your skill level at all hmm i have that a lot of times you have that oh, yeah. let's hear about that so it's like you know the 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 the, the biggest ones are the, the technical ones like when you're learning software and you're learning like very intricate things that you want to use specifically for a project um, and so th there are solutions out there, but let's say there is like few different artists that give you a few different solutions, right? Um, yeah. And then you might you might have missed like a plugin or like a UI part, or you cannot figure like there is certain softwares that I have tried to learn. I think that 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 are lacking a documentation, for instance, or the updates changed like the updates changed the software so much that if you watch a video from like two years ago it gives you an answer but like the name of the tool that's been used is like completely different <laughs> oh i mean that happens this, a lot this is this has happened so many times where i've, I've just given up on programs because yeah i, I so don't for like find technical, it techni technical part, yeah, yeah for technical things yeah it's it's can be frustrating but as far as like doing, I guess, like painting studies, usually that's never like let me down. That always kind of helps to kind of sit down and analyze something and direct, mm. you know, on the chart I had directed study. So that means like rather than doing, you know, you have a, a Rembrandt painting up and you're going to just copy it 
one for one, that's not super helpful for me. I try to choose a thing. So I'm like, do I want to get better at color? Then I'm going to do this study without color picking. And I don't care about brush quality. Like I'm just trying to match color blobs. Right. Or if I'm just worried about brush quality, then I will color pick because I'm not focused on that. But for me to try and do like five things at once while studying is too hard. So yeah, I just direct I it everyone. into, yeah. So it's just like direct it into one avenue and say, I want to get better at drawing and copying, or I want to get better at color picking, or I want to get better at brush quality. And then based on that, you decide how to do the study. Yeah, that's a good answer, man. But yeah, uh, yeah. It's, same to me. Like I, I try to focus on like achieving something and hey, like maybe first first few times it's not going to look good. But like you just have to keep practicing. Like if you give up after one attempt, that's not a practice. That's not considered a practice. That's that's considered an attempt. Like practice means that you actually put 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 in put in an actual work into it. Like you've put enough yeah. hours and again, like it's it's a direct like as you said, it's a directed effort. So you know what you're practicing specifically. Cool. All right, man. Let's wrap it up here. Excellent. Sorry all for right. not answering all the questions, but I think we went through quite a few of them. Uh, I think what we talked about kind of uh, grazed, like, you know, scra scratched the surface of other questions that we might have missed. So Yeah, I think I, think I saw a lot that I answered on the Instagram thing. So again, check that out. It's called Q&A on my Instagram. And just, you can click through that. And there's a ton yeah. of questions too. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I need Dude. to learn how to do those because I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just completely you. neglected social media, honestly. I'll show you. It's, yeah, social uh, media is such a completely different topic. I, I might do a podcast about that specifically uh, next time or in 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 next few months. But yeah, I'm curious sure. to see like how how you set up uh, those Q and A's because those look pretty Dude, dope. It was uh, it was awesome talking to you, man. I love this. Yeah, dude. Anytime, you know, you have like open door policy to any of my, you know, whether it's like a Twitch stream or a podcast. So, uh, and I plan to do like, well, yeah. Art Cafe is back, obviously. Um, a lot of it is going to be dependent on time or on getting artists uh, to join. Because uh, I don't don't particularly like talking to myself in front of the screen. Like, that's just, just not my thing. I, I just it's feel a little like weird. Very, it's very weird. It feels I feel alienated. I, I, I like to have conversation. Because there's so much more uh, that comes out, out of uh, conversation. Like, it's very easy to get into, like, your own sort of, like, biased, biased uh, rant about things when you're alone. Because you're sort of, like, feeding yourself with your own bullshit, you know? <laughs> Whereas when you talk, yeah. like, the conversation goes always somewhere, so... Yeah, yep. to hear another perspective is always exactly. nice. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up here. Um, thanks for everyone who joined. Oh, well, it's fucking a lot of people, actually. Uh, so that's great. Thanks, thanks, guys, for yeah, for for sticking around and 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 being here, and coming back to the podcast. Uh, love you guys. Uh, thanks for everything, and yeah, have a good night. I'll catch you guys next time on the podcast. Thanks, everyone. Believe in yourself. You can do it.